I'm wearing a sweater in my room, even though it's really hot, because I want to look cute for this video. Don't shame me. I'm at that girl and I'm at my show, and I'm for a man in the crowd on the floor. Hi everyone, it's Yasmin here, and today we're gonna get a little personal, a little deep. We're gonna be talking about therapy today and how therapy has helped me throughout my almost year. Yeah, almost year of going to therapy and what's done for me and the benefits that I've gained from going to therapy and all those good things. So let's get started so i've been going to therapy since november of last year i was going through a very dark place and dark phase in my life where my mental health was just like at an all-time low i hated my job i hated my life at the time my boyfriend who wasn't my boyfriend at the time advised me to go to therapy i was thinking of going to therapy a lot but it was always just put on the back burner because just for some reason mental health is always looked at as like a second priority instead of a main priority for a lot of people i was tangled up in this idea that i'm fine even though my mental health is spiraling and almost getting to a point that it was uncontrollable so i decided just take his advice what could go wrong You've been putting this off for the longest amount of time. You need to start putting your mental health as a main priority. I gotta say, taking that advice has been the greatest thing that I've ever done in my life, honestly. With my first session, it was so nerve-wracking but refreshing at the same time because I was finally allowing myself to authentically talk to someone who was a stranger but also understood how I felt in a way, which was really interesting and confusing for me. She listened and she cared and I realized that there was so much that I was holding in that was weighing down on me that was affecting not only my mental health but also my physical health. The first thing that I realized when I started going to therapy was that I don't like to cry. And I especially don't like to cry in front of people. Crying for me became an issue around 2015 when my mom passed away. I didn't really think much of it. I just kind of thought that it was a phase that I was just going through. It continuously kept on going throughout my life and it still continuously has an impact on me to this day. It's definitely become less frequent as I've been going to therapy. The one thing that she used to advise me to do was to physically analyze my body and see how it felt when I was talking about certain topics like my mom or my dad or just family issues or things like that. And I realized my chest used to tighten up so much and I felt like this tense pressure on my chest. She used to stare into my eyes while I was explaining how I was feeling. And I didn't like it. To feel vulnerable and to feel heard was a new territory and I didn't know how to navigate with that. I didn't know how to feel, how to act, it was different. But underneath all that uncomfortable feelings, there was also excitement underneath that because I was finally being able to tap into a place that I've never tapped into before. So as we had more sessions going on, I realized the frequency of me having episodes where I was sobbing uncontrollably and not being able to move it went from an eight to like a one i definitely recognize a change in how i basically micromanaged my crying and how i was able to let out emotions when i wanted to let out emotions and not just hold them in the next thing i learned while going to therapy was I tend to think in a black and white mindset. Now this was a very hard pill to swallow because at that time I really thought that I was a very open-minded person but it turns out that I was the exact opposite. One example is that I used to have high expectations of people. I used to put the high expectations that I have on myself onto others which is not necessarily the greatest trait in the world. I still struggle with that because 
when I'm doing something, when I'm like, hey, I'm an adult, you're an adult, you're even older than me, and like, I'm surpassing you in things. Now that I have a full understanding of that and realize that there is such a huge gray area when it comes to being an adult, and that there have been systems put in place, at least in this country, for some people to not succeed as well as others, and to understand that people go through shit, people go through hard times, it's not black and white whatsoever. Some people move at slower or faster paces than others and that's completely fine. That is totally okay. I've noticed at least on the internet that it's very hard for you to find people that take accountability or responsibility and it's usually them being the victim or them being wronged. And I feel like a lot of people don't necessarily want to admit that they're either wrong or that they were the evil villain in the story instead of the hero. I think it's really important for all of us to understand that we all make mistakes and that's completely okay. We don't have to live life feeling guilty over something that we've done when we understand what we did and we're deeply apologetic about what we did, we've learned from that and we've implemented ways of fixing our mindset and our ways in life to better ourselves in the future. I will say overall, therapy has helped me tap into my inner wisdom, acknowledging some of my toxic traits and being able to see things in a different point of view and stepping outside of my body and taking a look at myself and understanding that I've been through shit but that shit doesn't define me and that I am a person that is great, that is kind, that is confident, that's empowering, that's loving and all these wonderful things and qualities about me it's okay to make mistakes it's not the end of the world you learn you grow and you move on so you may ask yasmin how do you find a great therapist now let me tell you there are many steps that you have to take in order to find a great therapist <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding a lot of people will say that you need to take a lot of steps in order to find the therapist that you want which is sort of true but also it just takes understanding of what you want out of therapy what do you want help in do you want help with depression anxiety adhd any of those things do you need a woman to help you or do you want a man or someone who's non-binary do you care about their race there are many things that you can think of and things that you want the person to meet to qualify to be the therapist for you. Now for my therapist, I was one of the lucky people that I went on Psychology Today. I searched in therapists in my area and I was scrolling and I found my therapist and I instantly knew that she was the one. No questions asked. We actually have the same birthday, which I find pretty cool and it's almost like fate that I even stumbled upon her. You want to find someone that you feel comfortable with and someone that you find authentic and that you can have deeply personal conversations with because that's the reason why they're there is to help you fight your inner demons and it's gonna get ugly and it's gonna be tiring but I promise you when you have that epiphany moment and when you have a breakthrough of something that has been weighing you down and weighing on your psyche for the last however many years, it's a feeling like no other. Another question you might ask is, how much does it cost, if anything at all? Personally for me, I pay $50 per week for a 50 minute session. That is a steal because the pace rate that she usually charges her clients is $120 and up. That means I am getting $70 off of the same insightful therapist and insightful conversations than another person, assuming that they aren't using a sliding scale. What is a sliding scale? 
A sliding scale is a type of fee structure therapists sometimes use to give people with fewer resources a lower fee. The amount you pay for affordable sliding scale therapy is calculated by your income. So at the time, I had a waitressing job and I wasn't making that much money, especially since my hours were being cut. So she offered me $50 per session and eventually there will be a time where I'll be paying more once my income fluctuates to a higher salary, which sadly isn't the case at the current moment. So if you're looking for a therapist, find out if they use a sliding scale and if so, how much you'll be paying per session depending on your salary. So I go to a private practice and some private practices use sliding skills with some of their therapists and others also use health coverages and health insurance. With health insurance, depending on the health coverage you have, you're able to not pay a cent or you just pay however much the health coverage will have you pay, whether it's five, 10, 20 bucks instead of the 100 and something dollars that therapists usually charge. So most health insurance have mental health facilities like Kaiser, UC Davis, and the other health coverages that you can think of usually have resources to get you counseling or therapist if you have those health coverages. Now for me, I have Kaiser and I looked up Kaiser's mental health facility and how they usually treat their patients. And from what I researched, it's not necessarily the best. And I didn't really want to cop out on cheaper therapy sessions because I really wanted to invest my time and money into someone that actually cared and actually knew what they were talking about. And yes, I am spending less money than the average person that doesn't use a sliding scale, but I'm still putting money into it, which is something a lot of people don't do. And when a lot of people see the amount of money you have to put in into therapy sessions, it scares them. And that's why Therapy, at least I believe, should be affordable for all people and that's why I love the sliding scale because it's based off of your salary so you can't argue or they can't argue with you about how much you should be paying when your proof is right there of how much you're making per year. So if you do want to go to the private practice route, then you are going to eventually spend some sort of money regardless on what your salary is and I know that a lot of people have online therapy which is a great resource especially if you're busy and if you can't make in-person meetings especially during this time where COVID's happening and people don't necessarily want to see people in person being able to see people on FaceTime or telehealth or things like that is a great resource for people in order to still get the mental help that they need. I've heard better help is good, talk space, seven cups of tea. There's so many resources online that allow you to have chats or video calls with therapists or even people who are going through the same situation that you are. It's like a virtual peer group, which I think is really awesome because especially during this time, like I said, we need help and we need support because a lot of us are lonely at this time. So I'll leave links at the in the description below so you can find those online resources if you would like, as well as the articles I've read and websites that I've used and all those things so you can have a sort of idea about what you want and how you would want to find a therapist. That is all that I have for you guys today. I hope you found this video very helpful or sort of helpful. And if it didn't help you at all, let me know. Let me Tell me how I can fix the non-helping. That's not even a word, but it's fine. Words are made up anyways. Yeah, let me know what you thought about this video. Leave a comment below, leave this video a like. And if you like my channel, subscribe because I make videos and I enjoy making the videos so you should watch more because if you watch more and if you subscribe that'll make me really happy and why don't you just make a person happy for their day thank you for watching until next time